Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we'll be discussing something about acute viral hepatitis, just the basics. Uh, we'll just be discussing a part of this lecture. If you want to watch the full lecture, please go to my app. I have wonderful courses for you. Uh, if you are a resident, if you are a PG entrance exam, uh, PG entrance aspirant, uh, we have uh, co covered it for you. So please download the app. Link is in the description below. So this is just the basic lecture. We will just be summarizing and uh, understanding the important things in viral hepatitis. So the most common cause of acute hepatitis is viral hepatitis. Okay, viral hepatitis. The most common cause of acute hepatitis is the acute viral hepatitis. And the most common cause of acute viral hepatitis is hepatitis A. So this is very important and I hope you understood the most commons. Now, as you know, there are multiple hepatotropic viruses and we will be understanding a bit about each one of them. So first one is the HAV virus and this HAV virus. Then the next one is HBV virus. Third one is HCV. Fourth is HEV. And the fifth, fifth is Epstein-Barr virus and the sixth is cytomegalovirus. So these are the virus that we will be discussing and which is the source or the family of the HAV. So it is a picorna virus. It is a picorna virus uh, and the HBV is hepatna virus. Hepatna virus. The vi HCV is a flavi virus. Flavi virus and the flavi virus as you know the common one of the commonest flavi virus is the dengue virus and E is the Hepe virus. Epstein bar and cytomegalo are HHV virus, as you all know, HHV4 and 5. Okay, so HHV virus, uh, human herpes virus, and the next is the nucleic acid. So HAV, uh, see, uh, all the hepatitis, the named hepatitis virus, all of them are the single stranded RNA except the HBV, which is double stranded DNA virus. HCV, as I told you, all the named hepatitis virus are the single-stranded RNA, while the herpes virus group, herpes virus group is the DS DNA. It is the DS DNA. Okay, so this is the uh, the nucleic acid of the virus. Now the next one is the next one is the mode of transmission. So mode of transmission is very important. HAV is the pico oral route and it is just the fecal oral route there is no other route that is possible with HAV while for hepatitis B it is parenteral parenteral it might be either vertical transmission or it might be horizontal from the mother to child or from the uh, one person to other by drugs or blood transfusion or the sexual intercourse HCV is again parenteral while HEV is fecal oral but very, very rarely parenteral is possible with HEV. So the only virus where parenteral, only named herpes virus where, uh, sorry, only named hepatitis virus where parenteral is not possible is HAV. Okay. So that is very important. Epstein-Barr is from saliva. As you know, Epstein-Barr causes infectious mononucleosis, which is also known as the kissing disease. While cytomegalo is by saliva and urine. And as you know, for congenital CMV infection, we go for urine testing. Okay. So that is very, very important. Incubation period. The incubation period of HAV is 15 to 45 days. While for hepatitis B is 30 to 180 days. The same, the nearly uh, from the half to the same is for the hepatitis C virus, while for hepatitis E, it is 21 to 56 days. For Epstein Barr and Cytomegalo, it is nearly 4 weeks to 50 days and 4 weeks to 50 days. So, this is the nearly the same. Now, next and the last important thing is the possibility of chronic infection. So, hepatitis A can never cause a chronic infection. So, this is important. This is important. This is important. Hepatitis can never cross, cause a chronic infection. Okay. Hepatitis A can never cause chronic infection. While for hepatitis B, the chronic infection, the probability of chronic infection is more than 90% in infants. So, when there is a vertical transfer, 
there is the highest probability of chronicity amongst all viruses, okay? While it is less than 5% in adults, it falls to less than 5% in adults. Now, in hepatitis C, it is around 75% chances over the board, all the, uh, all the age population considered. So, there is a 75% chance of chronicity, while there is a very rare chance of chronicity in immuno deficient patient. So this is again very important that whenever you have an option where there is a possibility of chronic infection, very, very rarely HEV can cause a chronic infection, but HAV can never cause a chronic infection. So again, this is very important that rarely HEV in immunodeficient patient may lead to chronic infection and there are 0% chances of infectious mononucleosis or cytomegalovirus to cause chronic hepatitis. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you learned something new today. And if you want to see more such lectures, please download my app and uh, watch the videos and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.